You're knowing what you're wanting. Do you like how it evolves? Do you like how the wanting continues to come? Life just cues you up for more awareness of more desire, doesn't it? Just the way you knew it would when you decided to come into this physical body. So you've been listening to us for a while. Yes. So you think you have the sense of these things. We're just going to offer some fast, brief points of clarity just so that you can focus and come into full clarification, identification, calibration of your source energy stream and then off we'll go, all right? We're not going to do a long beginning here today because there are a lot of you here and you get the basis pretty much. So here it is. We'll just ask you to focus with us. Do you know that you are the creator of your own reality? And you understand that you do it because you are continually offering a vibration. It's emitting from you, whether you know that it is or not in all moments. And that the powerful law of attraction that manages all connections, all relationships, all rendezvous, all creation in this universe, the law of attraction is responding to your vibration. And so do you get that it is attraction, 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 attraction. Whew. So isn't it nice when you know that it is attraction to be in control of your output to which the law of attraction is responding? Don't you want to feel secure so that things of a secure nature flow to you? Don't you want to feel secure so that you are not repelling things of a secure nature? Don't you want to feel love and appreciation so that lovely and appreciatable things flow into your experience? Esther had a wonderful experience a few weeks ago, coming back from Barcelona at the airport in Barcelona. They were lined up, hundreds of them getting on a very big plane and the boarding time was slow a little delayed lots of people have been standing there for a while and they began the boarding and as always with most airlines certainly with this one they ask for people who needed a little extra time to board and a big line formed and a lot of people began getting on early because they needed extra time to board and Esther was standing in the first boarding area after that with a lot of people all of whom had paid a lot of money for their ticket they were going to be in the first class cabin and as this long line of people was boarding the airplane a woman who was in line behind Esther began protesting openly why is she pre-boarding I don't see a wheelchair or a crutch I don't even see a limp. <laughs> Look at that one. I'm 75 years old, she shouted for everyone to hear. And Esther wondered if she was with anyone, but if she was, they weren't owning up to it. <laughs> and Esther was sort of moving as far away from her as she could because Esther didn't want anyone to think that she was with her either. <laughs> This went on and on and on and on and on. It was a lot of people <laughs> pre-boarding. And then Esther and her group were released down the jetway. And this woman is a few people behind Esther and Esther could hear her protesting all the way down the jetway, very long jetway onto this very big aircraft. And then as they were settling in, this woman is telling every person who would listen to her and especially the flight attendants, Esther expected her to go tell the captain. <laughs> she was really worked up. And Esther thought, oh, this is what I've been hearing from Abraham for such a long time, that when we are spewing our protest, what we want can't come. And it was such a vivid picture. Esther thought, ah, I don't completely disagree with her. 
she's just more honest than I am <laughs> I'm just not shouting it I have thought some of those thoughts and we say whether you're shouting them or whether you're just thinking them if your point of attraction is one of protest if you feel disenfranchised if you feel disadvantaged if you feel taken advantage of if you feel disrespected then the respect and the advantage and the appreciation that you want to come to you even though you're asking for it and calling it your protest of not having it is keeping it away and as the plane took off and everyone settled in and subsequently a lot of people went to sleep and Esther got up to go to the bathroom and as she walked by here was this protesting woman sound asleep she looked like an angel <laughs> isn't that always the way and Esther stood and looked at her and sort of whispered into the air above her thanks for the reminder thank you for reminding me that that gets us nothing even though we think it should even though we think that if we shout our protest from the rafters and we get people to listen to us that then that squeaking wheel will get the oil and we say so here you all are covered in oil but are you happy <laughs> so that's really what we want to talk about we want to talk about your point of attraction we want to talk about how you know what your point of attraction is and so we're just going to be really brief here and then we're going to open it to what you want to talk about your point of attraction is everything and we just want to remind you that your point of attraction has two powerful facets because you were source energy before you came into this physical body and that inner being part of you still is one point of attraction your inner being is aware of you here but your inner being all of you didn't come in other words the source of you remains non-physically focused in a non-resistant state so as you are here in your physical body and you're sifting and sorting and evaluating and deciding and determining what you want you're launching rockets of desire which your inner being captures and identifies and isolates and becomes one with so that that point of attraction for you on your behalf is very powerful so when you ask for an improvement in anything that inner being part of you begins to live it immediately and the law of attraction responds to that non-physical part of you the law of attraction is also responding to the physical part of you who may be like this woman that we were describing protesting the injustice of your moment and so as the law of attraction is responding to your inner beings pure clear request on your behalf and your convoluted resistant request your push and pull request you've got a sort of tug of war going on inside of you that is exactly what negative emotion is anytime you feel negative emotion it means the law of attraction is responding to who you really are and what you really want and who you're being right now in this red hot minute so anytime you feel negative emotion it always means that it always means you are not a cooperative component to your own desire you are the only holdout because when you've asked and your inner being has become the vibrational equivalent of your asking and the law of attraction is responding to that and we want to remind you that when the law of attraction is responding to a non-resisted vibration the power of that is unspeakable this is the energy that creates worlds so when your inner being is attracting on your behalf it is a very big deal and when you contradict your own request with your awareness of what is which isn't yet sometimes often almost always the full-blown manifestation of what you're asking for then you are the one you in your physical body are the one introducing resistance into this equation and you feel it don't you but when you are feeling joy or love or clarity or appreciation when you're feeling those things that feel like interest now that means that in that moment you're not contradicting in that moment you are a cooperative component to your own desire and when you are a cooperative component to your own desire then you get to feel energy in motion then you get to witness things coming into place for you then you get to be the 
eyes on it, ears on it. You get to be the aware one watching you allowing your creation to come into being right before your eyes. It's thoughts turning to things right before your eyes. Thoughts turning to things. That's why you're here in this physical body. You're here in a time and space that manifests so that you can see it and hear it and smell it and taste it and touch it. It's why you're here. And your inner being is not here seeing and smelling and tasting and touching and feeling. Your inner being is not having those experiences of your physical senses. Your inner being is the vibrational equivalent of all that you have become and is joyously reveling in your expansion. So as we are visiting here today, we want to talk with you about whatever is on your mind, whatever it is that you want some fine tuning about. That's what this is about. But most of all, most, 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 most of all, we want you to leave this gathering so aware of what your true point of attraction is and so wanting and willing and practicing and becoming your own cooperative component to your own desires. That woman that Esther was watching, getting onto the plane and watching as she was on the plane, she didn't become a cooperative component to her own desires until she fell asleep. And as soon as she woke up, she stopped being a cooperative component all over again. <laughs> Because she is what so many humans are. She is so aware of the right now manifestation, such a conditional liver of life that if the condition pleases her, then she's pleased. Hardly ever happens for her. If the condition doesn't please her, then she's not pleased, which means she just keeps getting more and more and more of what she does not want. But if you can find a way, to get out ahead of it, to decide that you're going to be pleased before you stumble into something where you're not pleased, then you have a better chance of remaining pleased even if you're standing in the middle of something that isn't pleasing you. And here's why we think that would be a good idea and not hard for you to do. When you ask for something, it is always logical that you're asking for something that isn't yet. In other words, you're asking for more money because you want more money. There's logic in that, isn't there? So if you're asking for more money, but you're looking at what is, then you're not looking for more money, are you? You're looking for not enough money if you're looking at what is. But Abraham, aren't I supposed to be honest? Well, you could be true to who you really are. You could be true to the vibrational becoming. You could be true to your desire. You could be true to your true value. You could be true to your request. You could be true to the promise of your experience. You could be true to who you really are. You could be true to the whole notion of deliberate creation. But as humans, sometimes you think that you have to be so objective. So you weigh the pros and the cons, split energy, the pluses and the minuses, split energy, the yays and the nays, split energy, the rights and the wrongs, split energy. Where if you could just use the power of your mind by caring about how you feel to figure out what thought your inner being is in alignment with. Oh your non-resisted, pure, positive energy, inner being, God source from which you have come. If you could just figure out what that perspective is, it's not hard. When you're not loving, you can feel something's jacked up. When you feel insecure, something is really off. And it's not the world and it's not the universe and it's not the law of attraction. It's your perspective, you see.